stand this morning and join me as we make a shout of joy to the Lord this morning. As we just lift up his holy name this morning. As we declare, Lord, you are good and your mercies endureth forever. As we thank him this morning for his un fail in love towards us. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand this morning? Can we give him a shout of praise? Can we say I love you Lord? Can we say thank you Lord? Hallelujah to your name. We bless your name this morning. Bible says enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. It says give thanks to him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good, and his loving devotion, his unfailing love, endures forever. Amen? And his faithfulness continues to all generations. And so we thank him this morning for his faithfulness. Even when we are not worthy, even when we fall short, God is always faithful. Amen? So we thank him this morning. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. We say, Lord, you are good. And your mercies endure it forever. Hallelujah. You are good, Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good, yeah. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Oh, Lord, you are good. From every nation, from every nation and town, from generation to generation, we worship.
for who you are, for who you are, you are good. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord God. And we can truly stand here and say, you are good and your mercies endureth forever. Oh, you are great. There is none like you. So 
And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? Say it again. If our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? besides our God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Lord God.
the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the scripture says, and we know that God does nothing by accident. You know, people and scholars like to tell you about how Jesus was such a common name in his day. But the scriptures tell us that God, say with me, whom? God. God has given him a name that is above every name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the anointing on the name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to see it again. That at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Can we fill this room with the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Can we fill this room with the name of Jesus? We glorify your name. Oh, of God. Amen? Amen? That continues to work for us even when it seems like God is silent. Amen? We have to do our part, but I want you to rest assured that God is doing His part as well to make all things possible in your life. And I reflected about how the grace of God is manifested to us even in what we consider to be secular realms, you know? I'm drawn to the words of our president-elect, Joseph Biden. He, glory to God. November 3rd, 2020, he started his day in church. People say he's a Catholic, but he called upon the name of our God. And he cast his foot in Scanton where he was born. But he went to the house where he was born. And on the walls of that house, he wrote, From this house to the White House. Hallelujah. But he understood there was no power in his words. So when he could swear by none greater, he signed it by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And God brought it to pass. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. By the grace of God. And we have so much to give God thanks for. Because God is working for us all times. Hallelujah. My praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Yes, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. By the grace of God. So how are you living? Tell your neighbor, by the grace of God. So how are you living? By the grace of God. How are you living? By the grace of God. Yes, we can't touch and hold, but turn around wave with people. How are you living? By the grace of God. Hallelujah. And his grace works for us from now until the end of ages. Yes, from now until the end of ages. The Bible says, with sin abounds, grace does much more. Hey, does much more. Abound. You will never write a check against God's grace and it will bounce. Amen? You will never write a check against God's grace and it will bounce. It goes for every sin, it goes for every situation in your life. So we welcome you to Living Hope Cathedral, a place of new beginnings. We're excited that you are here. We're excited that you are stepping into the stream, the momentum of the Spirit of God that is moving in the earth. I tell you that we are in a season not just of difficulties, but of miracles. Amen. If you believe that, give the Lord a clap. We are in a season of miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And here's one thing I want you to understand, that these seasons, these difficult times, separate men from boys, separate people of faith from people who are filled with disbelief. The Bible says the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ suffered violence. But I'm glad it didn't stop there, but it says, but the violent, say that's me, 
that's me takes it by force hallelujah and so when life pushes on me I push back in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ glory to God hey I've come to stir up the spirit of the warrior in you when life push on you push back in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ glory to God hallelujah hey hey somebody say I'm a warrior hey I'm a warrior hey I'm a warrior in Jesus mighty name give the Lord a hand we bless your name Jesus glory to God yes I'm a warrior and that's who you are by the grace of God hallelujah by the grace of God and God we thank you father that you do all things for your glory and for our good in accordance to your word and to your good pleasure and we embrace your will and your perfect plans for us even now we continue to pray for all of those who have been elected for our president we pray for President Trump but we also pray for President-elect Joseph Biden Father God we know there are so many predictions but we announce them wrong so many prophets have spoken in your name but they have prophesied lies we forgive them for their sins hallelujah they were well intended but that message was not of God because you said when a message is from God it comes to pass I pray that there be conviction in the house because we have prophesied lies for what we want hey may you bend our hearts and bend our minds may we embrace your will may we be like the Lord Jesus Christ that says not my will ha ah, but let your will be done in the earth hallelujah in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ and even now during this pandemic during this transition during these difficult times we embrace the will of God for our lives hallelujah we stand in faith in faith and we refuse to be moved hallelujah we are considered an immovable people and our faith shall not be shaken in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ we declare it now and refill this house with the glory and the excellence of your name for now and forever for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever and all God's people say amen and amen glory to God amen we're gonna have a word of encouragement from Pastor Reba I feel like I preached already I might just send you home ah uh, that sounded good huh? not that easy right <laughs> good morning good morning glory good morning God. And we are so grateful for those of you who have joined us in the sanctuary yeah. just to hear your voices as we worship together. Yes, hear Amen. the sound, the sound of victory of, and of triumph. praise and uni Glory unity as we worship God makes a big difference. And so we are glad that you have chosen to be here in the house. And for those of you who have joined us via Facebook Live feed, we are also grateful for your presence. And as we continue to worship God, we know that he will build his throne in our lives and in Amen. our community Amen. and in this world. And so the scripture for today is a very short passive scripture taken from Isaiah chapter 66 verse 9 and it says shall I bring to the point of birth and not cause to bring forth says the Lord shall I who cause to bring forth shut the womb and I know a lot of us have things that are almost coming to pass we can feel it we saw the momentum getting there and now it seems as if it is not going to be delivered but the word of God was spoken at that time for um, the children of Israel. And we are using it today to encourage us also that God will not bring something to the point of birth and not I'm cause it to pass. come to pass. Amen. Amen. So whatever Amen. that Lord is that God. you are standing Lord. and believing God for, Lord we're going to push God. it Lord into reality Lord. by trusting into our most high God Lord. that as we continue to pray, as we continue to be faithful, as we continue to worship him, he will bring to pass that thing that he has promised. Okay. So our, our, our living hope preserve. We almost had the brink of getting there. We will push and we will continue to pray and we'll continue to worship. We'll continue to give because we know that that is a thing that was ordained by God and it will come to pass. Amen. So let's not get discouraged in whatever it may be that we are waiting for God to bring to pass because he will not allow a stillbirth to occur. We will birth a living thing because we are trusting in a God who's able to do it. Amen. May God continue to bless you as you worship today at Living Hope Cathedral, a place of new beginnings. Glory to God. Amen. Give yourselves a hand. You may be seated. I just want to see if I'm in the right place. Do you know that deep calls unto the deep? 
And the Bible says that his spirit, spirit bears witness with our spirits. And I was listening to the worship as I was driving in. I came in and I prayed. And the worship was amazing. But when in the middle of her worship, Sister Raquel began to say, Jesus, whoa, there was a transfer of anointing. There was an increase or elevation of anointing. When she began to lift up the name of Jesus, how many of you felt it? Glory to God. And that was a beautiful moment, if you were discerning, for you to tap in. Amen. Tap it. Because we are right there, like Reba said, on the threshold of miracles. And the person who completes it for us is none other than Jesus himself. Amen. None other than Jesus himself. For he who had begun a good work in you, he is faithful. Say with me, he is faithful. He is faithful. He who has begun a good work in you. And he has begun a good work in you. And the scriptures tells us that he is faithful to complete it. He is faithful to complete it. He is faithful to complete it. Hallelujah. How many of you are still believing for the completion of a thing? Can you go ahead and just celebrate God? Hallelujah. Like it's done. Like you're seeing it in your eyes. Like you're living it. Like you're experiencing it. Hallelujah. Like you're breathing it. Hallelujah. Like it's part of your life. Hallelujah. Yeah, like you're walking in it now. In Jesus' mighty name. We give you praise and glory. We give you praise and glory. And I, I, I believe in my heart that I'm going to start sharing um, or letting people share their testimonies because their testimony is going to inspire you in this season and let you know that God is still at work. Not just in Genesis when he divided the Red Sea. Not just in the times when he provided man on the wilderness. But God is working in 2020 when everything around us seems so dim that God is working. We are hearing testimonies of the miracle work and power of God in the lives of people. We are seeing with our own eyes how he brings this, the lifeless back to life again in Jesus' mighty name. So we give God thanks for that. We are seeing financial miracles. We are seeing in a season when things should die, we are experiencing increase. And we don't have any reason to accredit a, a fact in reality to give credit to. And so we give all the credit to God. Amen? We give all the credit to God. And I get to be a part of it in Jesus' mighty name. I give God thanks that people are still being saved. During the coronavirus, I had the privilege of baptizing a young man into the family of our Lord Jesus Christ. And because he sought me out for counseling, and I shared many moments with him, I heard his heart cry. And they just touched bases with me and gave me an update. And I, I see God working for them already, financially and otherwise. And they've asked me to come and bless their new place. And so I'm looking forward to that. Last weekend, I had the privilege of blessing a new addition into our church. One of our family members was blessed with a, another house. Give God a praise. I said another house. Whenever somebody's ahead of you for a miracle you expected, you should get excited. I mean, really excited. That's what the scriptures teach. You should be happy as if it happened for you and you're about to get yours next. Amen. Glory to God. So we give God thanks for that. And then this afternoon, I'm going to have the privilege of going and dedicating and anointing a brand new business space. And I give God thanks for that. Give the Lord a hand. Glory to God. Let's not stand. And so I give God thanks for that. Because God's people are learning how to live boldly during difficult times. Amen. They're signing leases, they're getting new spaces, they're believing God for increase, and they're, they're trusting God for amazing things. I even want to give God thanks for my wife who, during the season, is looking to expand. And so come January, she'll be adding another physician to her practice. Could you give the Lord a hand? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. A board-certified pediatrician who's coming down next week to look for a place to live. 
And so she is growing. And I pray that the blessings of God will always be upon her life because she's been faithful with me and given. Amen. And a lot of time when you have dreams, those dreams sometimes can make you change the plan. That's what I've come today to talk about, make you change the plan. Because you keep giving to God and giving to God's purpose and giving to God's house and giving to the living hope preserves, you think that you're getting left behind. And that is the, the challenge and the difficulty that was in our minds. That we feel like when we when we're given to Christian living, when we begin to embrace God's principles for our lives, somehow in the back of our minds, and that's the enemy, we sometimes begin to believe that we are getting the short end of the stick. And because of that, some of us are trying to do a balancing act where one day we're hot, the next day we're cold, we got a foot in the, in the church, but just in case, we got a little toe in the world. And I've come today to challenge you based upon Peter because of the urgency, urgency of our times, that we're going to have to become focused, we're going to have to become intentional, and we're going to have to run with diligence and urgency to the prize and to the goal that is ahead of us. And there are ways that we do it, and Peter tells us how. So today I've come to, to talk to you about dare to be different. Dare to be different. And that is the encouragement from Peter as he told him about this amazing salvation that we have gotten to Jesus Christ our Lord, as he starts out and tells us that he has given us everything that pertains to life, this life, and he's also given us everything that pertains to godliness. What Peter was letting the church know that they are well equipped, that God has so prepared you for success in the life to come, but he's also so adequately prepared us for success and for overcoming in this life that is ahead of us. Amen? And so could we turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, a New Living Translation, and we're going to be reading 10 verses for our conversation this morning, verses 13 through 23. And here's what it says. It says, So, therefore, in the New King James Version, the King James Version, so is how they live in, New Living starts out, prepare your minds. Do what? Prepare your minds. In the kingdom, it says, gird up your minds. Begin to work where? On your mind. So first he gives us assurances because now he's going to give us instructions. He's giving us clear commands. He's saying, okay, you have all these amazing privileges because you're born again. And I tell you, it's an unfair advantage. God has given you this amazing expectation that when you pray, your prayers will be answered. When you live righteously, that God will reward the way you live. That you've been given every assurance by God's holy word. That if you truly trust God with your life. Trust God with the way that he's asked you to live out your days on the earth. That your heavenly father will look upon your ways and he will honor and undergird your life with his divine truth and word. And he will lead you into your purpose and his divine plans for you on earth. And after he's given them the, these assurances because he's speaking up to Christians who are severely persecuted. He says, now I want you... Now that you have these assurances that God has given you all of these amazing promises and he's committed himself to you and he's demonstrated this commitment not with corruptible things like silver and gold <clears throat> but he, he wrote this new covenant that guarantees this promise and his response to the way we live in the world with the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, now I'm going to give you very specific instructions of how I want you to live. In the first place he starts is with our minds. So he says, prepare your minds for action. For what? For action. Prepare your minds for action. And exercise self-control. Second command. Put all your hope. Put what? All your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't keep slipping back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. You were blinded by the prince of the world, but you know better now. So now that you know better, you must be holy in everything you do. Just as God who chose you is holy. 
For the scripture says, you must be holy, not you may, not you can, but you must be holy, because I, your God, am holy. And remember that your heavenly Father, to whom you pray, has no favorites. God has what? No favorites. Man, that just made me feel small. So God is saying to me right here as I preach to you, he has no favorites between me and you. It's a level playing field. Do you know people talk and behave like God got favorites? That what God is doing in the life of Pastor Carl or Sister Lorraine or somebody else because they're serving, or even Sister Raquel and Brother Alkin because they're always up front serving that he won't do for them. And God came today to tell you that he has no favorites. Why do you think he's saying that? He's saying that because he wants you to know that it's a fair level playing field, that we're all in this together. And how what, whenever you do what is right, God is going to respond the same way to you as he responds to anyone else. Someone should put a praise on that. Give the Lord a hand. As he, res- as he responds to Shambach, T.D. Jakes, call all the great names. The same way he responds to them when they pray, he will respond to you. How many of you believe it? Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. That should energize your prayer life. God has no favorites. He has no favorites. He will judge. Judge mean reward, pay, pay or repay. Judge is when you pass judgment and then you give a sentence. So he will judge or reward you according to what you do. According to what you do. I have that on the line, so that's why you see me emphasize it. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents, you're only here for a short time. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which loses its value. But he redeemed you from this empty way of living by the precious blood of Christ, the sinless and spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, our Lord Jesus Christ has been revealed for your sake. Through Christ, you have come to trust in God. and You have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. Verse 22, you were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters Love each other deeply with all your heart. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal and living word of God. May God add his richest blessing to his word. When you first start reading it, it seems like it's a heavy scripture, but it's You get into it and you allow your mind to really begin to absorb and to draw in or drink in the essence and the substance of what Peter is saying. It has so many great and special statements or promises or declarations that you can make a part of your life. And so we welcome you to Living Hope Cathedral, a place of new beginnings. That's our tagline. God gave that to us when we began. Today we continue our sermon series both living in difficult times, and we are living in difficult times. We are excited that there's been a change in government, but how many of you know that the work is still ahead of us? The pandemic is raging. And when the pandemic rages in the United States, we have to be concerned. So many of us think we're insular, that we are only 32 square miles, that we're surrounded by water. Something that seems to be a dis- disadvantage is actually an advantage. But several um, years ago, when I was still in high school, I read something that made me smile. It says, when the United States catches a cold and sneezes, the rest of the Caribbean (laughs) becomes infected. What they really say is when you see anything happening in regards to the United States and the economy and its people, believe it or not, in a very short time, we will begin to see repercussions or impact from what is happening offshore on the continent. And so we have to be mindful and we have to be wise. That was during a meeting of Caribbean leaders. They recognized the influence of the continental United States, even though many of them draw bow lines 
to Europe, they realized that there was a more influential dotted line that was drawn to the United States of America, whether she supports them with funding or finances, yes or no. And so that is the reality. We see that we're still in a world where the pandemic is surging and raging. We keep praying and hoping for a vaccine. And I truly believe our prayers will be answered. But you know what? Our prayers have already been answered. And we did not have what I considered the appropriate response. I remember when we first started hearing about the, the COVID. And I'm going to call some people names, but it's out of what my mind reminds me. I remember when we first um, started praying about the COVID or hearing about the COVID. When it first came upon our land, it seemed like everybody who got COVID-19 succumbed to death, regardless of their age. Like, it seemed like that it, was, it, was, it was high. And so, like everyone else, I wasn't absolutely overcome with fear, but I was anxious. I was concerned. And so I began to pray and do research, and I began to realize how devastating it was and, and why world leaders were so afraid when, when they heard about the word COVID and so concerned about it spreading among their populations. And so one, one Tuesday night, because we were praying uh, on Tuesdays as well as Thursdays, we were praying, and our um, sister Kendra prayed for the people who get it to be asymptomatic. First time I, I heard it because I went and looked it up on Wednesday. I said, oh, okay, I need to find out what this is about. Okay? And so I looked at them and said, oh, wow. What she's praying is, okay, God, if we're going to get it, make it as if we never got it. I said, that's an interesting thought. Everybody follow me so far? Yes. And so she's praying. I said, well, we've been praying that people won't get it. We're praying that it will die and dry up. But somebody got the bold and say, you know what? If we get it, treat it as if we never had it. I was like, wow, that's a bold thought. And so then you begin to realize, if you've been hearing us, we begin to pray that the people got the coronavirus, that it will not have the impact it was having, and it will be mostly asymptomatic. Can I tell you that as I live, I begin to read about more asymptomatic cases, start hearing about it, and, and, and the report was, especially for people recovering prayer, that says, Pastor, like I had a scratchy throat, it lasts for two days, then it was gone. And one day, I'm sitting at my desk and keep praying and anxious, and God says, but I answered your prayers. You didn't get excited about that. And I said, how? How did you answer it? It's still spreading. He says, did you realize that more and more cases are asymptomatic, and that even people around you that got it was not as severely impacted as before? Most of them are saying, oh, Pastor, I got it. I had a scratch of throat. <clears throat> Maybe lost my tears for a few days, but I'm good. And that's an answer to prayer. And so I just brought you back this way so that we can stop and give God thanks for answering our prayers. Can someone give the Lord a hand? I'm talking about faith and how you respond. I began to realize when the cases was raging. And they were up in the hundreds, 143, and it went up in the 200s. I said, God is going the opposite to what we are praying. So, you know, a lot of times we're praying, and I thank God that when we cease praying, that he is still mindful of our prayers. Do you know that God is still paying attention to prayers that you have ceased mentioning before him? Do you know that God still has those prayers like incense before him? You've gone on 10, 12 years thinking it's, it's a done deal, and then God shows up, and you're like, eh, eh. The last time I prayed for this was 2004, but, but look, it happened now. I'm showing you about how God is still at work for us, even when we become discouraged and stop lending faith or words to our faith. And so we were praying about the cases coming down, active cases we were talking about. Somebody elevator is going up. We were talking about active cases coming down. We went up from 143. I remember I stopped listening. The next time somebody told me because you were getting these notifications by Homeland Security, it was up in 180 something. Then it reached like 213. I said, oh my God, it's, it's out of control. I can't remember the last time I'm praying, but one morning, we get up and Riva gets the notification on the phone. She says, wow, we are down to 19 cases. I was on my way to the restroom and I had no response. 19 cases. My wash, brushing my teeth. And then the Spirit of the Lord says, did you just hear what Reva told you? We are down to 19 active cases. 
Wow. Then we went down to 13 active cases. Wow. God is answering our prayers. Can someone give the Lord a hand? We got so much ventilators because we were afraid, but we knew that our hospitals, were, hospitals and we're not done in our hospitals, we have some excellent institutions of care, but we know our hospitals were not adequately prepared if this thing brought on a slaughter of cases in our land. Today we are living with ventilators that are not in use. <clears throat> we have zero active cases in our hospitals, but we prayed about that. See how excited we get? Could we give the Lord a hand for that? Answered prayer. Answered prayer. Answered prayer. And why I'm stirring up this way is because I want you to continue to dare to be different, to dare to continue to trust God and believe God with your life, to commit your ways unto God, to trust Him in everything you do, to commit your ways unto Him, and He will lead and direct your paths. Because, believe me or not, we are not out of this yet. Even with a new president and even... No, I'm going to continue. I could preach to children making noise. <clears throat> I'm just making sure it's not God trying to reach me. <laughs> I might be preaching something wrong. <laughs> but there's so much anxiety about this second or third wave. We see cases going up in Europe, and we see cases going up in the continental United States. That's why I tell you when America sneezes, the whole rest of the world get cold. And then some of us could get really concerned because we are just now starting to emerge. We're just now starting to come back out to church. Our numbers in church has gone from 10 to 100. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Give the Lord a hand. Yeah, I, I had to be preaching. Listen, I had a job, you know. I wasn't getting that. I had to imagine that. Several months ago, preaching to 10 people in the congregation. And life is moving in the right direction. But we see all these threatening signs that we could be plunged once again into confusion and darkness. But as the people of God, we refuse to accept that as our reality. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. That's what I'm bringing you to. I'm showing you that God did it for us in the past. Whether we are paying attention to not, God was actively answering our prayers. Woo! Glory to God. Actively answering our prayers. And because of our faith, we pray again, believing that there will be no second wave in these United States Virgin Islands. Hallelujah. That God will set a boundary, a limit on the COVID-19 cases in our land, and he will speak with his voice of authority this far and no further. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, we establish a bloodline. Whoa. A geofence, a Jesus fence around our territory in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. I'm praying now. Can someone help me pray? Stand to Yeah, we come against the second wave and the third wave in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We declare a thing and it shall stand fast. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you lift up your hand if you believe it? Hallelujah. Yes. We declare a defense around our schools, around our institutions, around our churches, and around our homes. Glory to God. Hey, you have told us by your word that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you are able to lift up a standard against him. We become the standard bearers in the earth. Glory to God. We become the standard bearers in the earth. Hallelujah. Yes, we are reminded when the plague came within the community of faith, that the men of God ran with the anointed and to stop the plague where they ran. We run out in the midst of our community. These United States Virgin Islands which we love and we say by the grace of God, hallelujah, and the covenant of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, Yeshua our Lord, yes, that you will create for us a no-fly zone, a free zone, hallelujah, that you will inoculate our people, that you will give us herd immunity, hallelujah, hallelujah. We curse COVID-19 and command it to die in Jesus' mighty name. Go ahead, give the Lord a hand. Yes, we are praying for that. This Goliath will not drive us back into a cave. Hallelujah. This Goliath will not drive us back into a cave. We stand fast. We take our ground. We refuse to see our numbers in church go down again for people to speak out against the Holy Communion for what is established shall stand in Jesus' mighty name. Woo! 
watch is established shall stand in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, glory to God. Can someone put a praise on it? Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Hey, 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 hey. Glory to God. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I don't know about you, but I'm so happy by what God is doing. I see the momentum in the church, and the momentum that is in the church will be released in the land. And we cannot afford for the enemy to interrupt the plans and the purposes of God for his people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm getting excited. And we are going to defend this crop. We're going to defend this harvest. We're going to stand as watchmen over our city. Hallelujah. We're going to lift up our voice and we will not be afraid. Tell your neighbor, we will not be afraid. Go ahead, encourage each other. Tell someone else, we will not be afraid. Hey, we will call those things which are not as though they are, and they shall be established in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. That's who we are. Hallelujah. That's who we are. That's who we are. We got to get radical in our prayers. Because come January, COVID is the least of our problems. There was a greater pandemic than COVID. God will allow us to triumph over COVID to show us that what is possible with COVID is possible with this youthful violence in our land. That is a true pandemic in the United States. Virgin Islands has been for a long time. But you know what has happened? The church has prayed about it so often. And every time it keeps raising its ugly head. And we've decided to just camp out with the enemy in the promised land. But I want you to go back and read that strategy. It's a bad strategy. When the people of God chose to just live and coexist with their enemies in their land, eventually the enemies became greater than them and defeated them. It's a sad commentary. And so it tells you when you, when you, when you confront your enemy, eliminate him. Are you, are you understanding me? Yeah, yeah, don't get tired of me. When you confront the enemy in January, we're going to persevere in prayer. Oh, you get silent. Mm-mm-mm. We're not going to be discouraged. I'm going to say it again just for me. When we confront this enemy in January, we will confront him like our lives depend on it. Like my life, the life of my sons, and the life of my grandchildren who chooses to live in this land. We will pray like their lives depend upon it. Because they will not live in a U.S. Virgin Islands that I, if I was to come back, don't recognize. Are you hearing me? I hope you feel the same way. So tell your neighbor, dare to be different. So he writes us and tells us, dare to be different. And as we're looking at the word, it talks about holiness. Holiness. There's been so much songs written about holiness, but 80% of the people talking about holiness don't even really know what it stands for. Oh, be holy, it's God's holy. It all means separated, called apart. It means when you begin to designate a purpose for a thing. By designating the purpose for that thing, you eliminate every other purpose. Is that making sense? And so sometimes, let me show you how it works with dishes. If you bring dishes home, there's nothing more special about the dishes you bring home than the dishes you brought home before. But how many of you know that we have, many of us have special dishes in our house? And what makes them special is just that we love them. Okay? If they were in my house, they may not be special, right? And what I call special in my house is the one in your house, they wouldn't be special. They'd be everyday dish. And you come, oh, wow, he, he really like them dish. But I'm even up in the China, you remember those? China cabinet. And because they were special dishes, we treated them differently. They couldn't stay in the kitchen with the other dishes. We had to put the China cabinet out in the dining room. And for those of us who really love our dishes, we put it out in the living, grand living room. It was on display. These were our special dishes. And you know you are a guest of honor. When they left their kitchen where they were cooking and they came out and they turned that little gold key in that china cabinet, your heart used to, oh my God, these people love me. They're bringing out their fine dining ware for me. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying? All you did was take those dishes that people packed in a warehouse with other dishes, put paper around them, put them in a box. All you did was took, took dishes that anybody could have designated for anything else, and you said, I have brought you into my house, and I have made you holy. 
I have set you apart for this purpose. And so everybody who understands the purpose of the thing knows that you can't go and touch mommy special dishes to go do any craziness in. Anybody remember? And the sad thing about these special dishes, they only remain special as long as you're alive. Because you're the one who made them holy. I mean, that's one inheritance people will be fighting not to take. When they realize you can't give away mommy's special dishes that are like 50 years old, they don't even answer their phone. Oh no, they're trying to give away mommy dishes. Oh no, I'm, I ain't got a room, my house full. Nobody takes these special dishes. I have lived to see them special dishes throw away. But they were holy as long as the person who designated them was alive to be holy. And God has designated you and I to be holy. And he's saying that you are holy because I am holy. And I have been set apart to be different. So when I called you to me, I set you apart to be different. Hallelujah. And so many of you are acting crazy, living in the world like you have no regard for who called you. And who singled you out. And who said to a watching world, look at him, he is different. And God says, I am different. I am unique. So because I owned you, you are unique. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. And God is saying to you that not only did he make you different, but Peter is now writing to encourage you to embrace your differentness and dare to be different. So many of you are living to blend in. That was never the Christian strategy. You guys behave like we're in warfare. We got to wear this same camouflage. We got to look like them, Pastor. We got to move like them. And anything that makes us different, we don't want to do. Because people might just recognize you as being different. We are people who shout. We are people who get violent when we pray. This is not those quiet people. They're having a father. This is not that. And one day I'm going to add James to just pan the audience. And if you don't want to be seen with us shouting down the heavens, you could duck. <laughs> because the God who called you is different. Amen. And he selected and called you out so that you could be different. Amen. And he's saying, because I am holy, you have to be holy. Amen. I have set myself apart to be God to you. And because I know my purpose, you can't mama guy God to be anything else. Are you hearing me? And God is saying, I have done the same thing for you. I have called you out to be different. The word used for holy in the Bible is the same root word for different. Say with me, different. It means to be separated, to be called out, to be set apart. That's the word. When you set something apart, you are making it distinct. And God is saying, embrace your distinctiveness. Stop trying to be like the world. And we are living in difficult times when your yea have to be yea, your nay have to be nay, and those who call upon the name of the Lord God has to stand up for righteousness and truth. Are you hearing me? You're going to have to walk like a Christian, talk like a Christian. And you have to be a Christian because that is what God called you to be. Stop giving God two hours of Christianity. You just can't be a Christian when you come in church. And some of you know, got every manifestation of Christianity dunk pack once you get into these walls. Walk out and you're confused. You don't know what a Christian looks like. So I've come today to tell you, to help you. And God is saying that I've made you distinct, different, and I want you to embrace it. I've set you apart. So here's the first thing that God wants you to do. And it's going to help you during these times. Write this down. God wants you to accept responsibility for your life. He wants you to accept responsibility for your life. And this is something that I'm learning and I'm, uh, and I'm growing in. 
Um, I would be in a place and not like where I'm at. And then I romanticize where I'm at by saying that was God's will for my life. And I'm waking up to realize that it was not God's will for my life. That I allow myself to accept where I were because I was not willing to do what it takes to change it. Are you, are you helping me? Is it making sense? Not making sense? Okay, making sense? So I have been getting um, so much compliments that even my absence, people are talking about me. And it's a minor thing that took seven years, but for them it seemed like it happened overnight. So I have a Bayesian friend. You see how I changed my accent to match? <laughs> you didn't notice, right? If you had the zombie, you notice. As soon as I was going to talk about Bayesian friend, I, I changed my accent. Because of how she greeted me. I'm walking, going to fruit bowl. I said, you know what, I got to get my steps in. I ain't doing enough steps. So I was down to 6,000 steps. I said, you know what, I could drive because my laser cell from seven years ago used to drive. I used to drive everywhere. If I had to go from my river office to the emergency room, which is the back of the hospital that we call, just walk across the bridge, I would jump in my Mercedes and drive over to the parking lot and spend five minutes trying to find a parking space. When I would have been already in the building if I had walked. Say lazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm speaking about me, so I don't speak about you. You see why I preach this way? I want you to get it. Seven years ago, that's how I operated. So, boy, I'm going on the road. I'm going on the road. Somebody drove past me, so I'm not paying attention. Then I heard the brakes. I'm still stepping, still stepping. The person reversed back. Then they look out their window. So, remember, I told you this is an older woman now. I'm feeling good. She said, eh, eh, damn my pastor. I like the greeting song, odd. Yeah, yeah, hey, how are you? Good, good, good. She said, and this is the part when God starts blessing you, don't get upset when people don't know how to form it with words. She said, but I had to reverse to see if that was you because it's almost like less than one half. <laughs> Glory! Yeah. <laughs> if you're in your wrong mind, you will think it's an insult. But when God clothed you in the right mind, Amen. you begin to realize it's a compliment. Amen. She starts to say, I thought I saw half of you. I say, well, this is the half that's still here. Woo! Glory to God. Well, boy, she stayed there now when she realized it came out of way and she butted me up. Oh, my God, you look so good. Pastor Richardson. No, she's talking with other Pastor Richardson. She must be happy, eh? <laughs> She wasn't happy before. <laughs> I have to find out from her. She was telling people secrets that <laughs> you had a problem with my weight, babe. Somebody, somebody met me down the street. See, so you weren't happy before. I'm using humor, but you get the point. And they're complimenting me because in the space of time they've known me, I've disappeared. I've shrinked. And for them, it seems like it's overnight. It seems like it's unintentional. Sometimes people even go for the action if you're okay. Making, you don't sick. And normally when they say sick, like, and they underline sick, they mean you don't got AIDS or, or cancer. I ain't got neither. <laughs> say accept responsibility. I'm preaching about me so I can tell you because I want to bring you from the past to the current because what you're looking at is the results of accepting responsibility seven years ago. Are you hearing me? So when I tell you about accepting responsibility for your life today, I don't want you to begin to say, yeah, yeah he could preach a good story and that sound good, but I in a hard place right now. Nothing going to change. I want to tell you. Paul, Peter's saying you have to accept responsibility. And the way you do it is where? In your mind. Are you ready to do this? So he talked this big talk about faith. But he said you begin to prepare yourself to live out your faith. The first place that you have to harness, that you have to bring about self-control is where? In your mind. And he says you have to prepare your mind for what? Action. Say with me what? Action. Not just do, when you're researching and when you're reading and when you're gathering and you've read every book about going from good to great and how to be the best wife, if you're not reading for action, you're just doing research. And he says that many of you have been spending your life doing research, 
But from in this season, which is a difficult season, he wants you to begin to prepare your mind for what? Action. Say with me what? Action. Action. God is waiting for? Action. Tell your neighbor, God is waiting for action. God is waiting for action. And Lord, it takes more than just putting on tight t-shirts to think you've lost weight. I started traveling and I started saying the way to look like you're buff and lose weight is to buy smaller clothes. Those things will choke the life out of you. I put on a smaller t-shirt, that thing would not stay down my pants. As I'm walking to the airport, the thing would pull up out of my pants. Pop! All right, pop, pop. And I got to be pulling down. I was not trying to have no midriff. That would look odd. Are you hearing me? And I tried to change everything but my action. But I give God thanks for people who are around me who love me enough to hit me on the hand when I was misbehaving. My wife, who even the other day tell me, um, you had enough bread. Put that slave back. I got so mad. <laughs> I ain't no toy with you. I almost took a second slice and, and, and slapped her with butter, just to show. Then I say, no, she's right. You keep rebelling, you know where that take you. So hear me. Yes, dear. I put back the bread. That's for you willful men. Learn to submit. And the wife say, yeah, yeah, my wife helped me. Right up to yesterday, right, babes? Don't laugh. I'll put you. She's not a bad wife, people. Stop writing her letters. <laughs> I'm teasing you now. She's fine. But what I'm saying to you is that it takes action. And it took people around me telling me that you got to be different. God brought people into my life. I don't know if I would have chosen them to be around me, but he put them right next to me. He brought a guy named Coach. And if he wasn't close enough, just by coming to church, he'd get right up in the family. And so then he comes to family events, and when I go in for the stage, he say, I, I, um, I think you'll do better with a salad. I am a grown man. I don't want no bush. That's rapid food. I want scalloped potatoes, macaroni and cheese. That was my diet. But you know what I do? And he's there. I submit to coach, my brother-in-law, because I realize he's also looking out for whose interests? My interests. I'm telling you these things because when God talks to us, we believe like God is trying to cheat us and give us a shot in the stick. Remember we starting there? That a lot of times we believe Christianity is about God cheating us or giving us a shot in the stick. When he says to us, love your enemies, we feel like somehow God, no, that don't sound right. You're like, you set me up to fail, right? But he said, do good to those who despitefully use you. Amen. You're like, that, that don't sound like a winning strategy. That sounds like you're setting me up to fail. Understand? Pray for those who despitefully use you. Pray for what? To me, I only know about good prayers. You tell me pray for good for people who mistreated me? Yeah, that's a winning strategy. Are you hearing me? How about, about this one? Don't be prideful because he who exalts himself, God will humble. But when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, listen to the, a lot of people miss this part, in Drew season, he will lift you up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Someone give the Lord a hand. And I've come today to tell you, you have to accept responsibility for where you are and where God wants to take you. Here's my last example because this is showing you about accepting responsibility. Boy, I love bacon. And the reason I say it is because I've passed on that gene to my children. The first time I've tasted bacon, my wife is gone, so I can tell you, was last night. After almost seven years of cold turkey, Romani did some bacon because he was going to cr crush it up and put it on homemade pizza. And his mother told him, make a veggie for your father and me. And so I know that when I come to the pizza, come out of the oven, I had to eat the veggie pizza in the presence of my wife. So when the crumples of bacon was on the counter, <laughs> the spirit of the Lord in me just passed by. And it tastes just as good then. 
as it is way back then. And I say, that's why I had to break up with you. You had too much power. The grease on, mm, you had too much power. That's why I had to break up with you. It ain't that I, I still don't love you. So when you hear me that I've walked away from bacon, it ain't that there ain't still a love affair. Because when I smell it, mm, <laughs> my insides still do somersaults and leaps. But I'm happy to tell you that even with a little taste, I knew I wasn't going back. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. You know why I knew I wasn't going back? Not that it didn't still taste good, not that it didn't sm still smell good. I knew I wasn't going back because I had prepared in my mind. Say with me, where? In my mind. Yeah. And God is saying to us that if you want to see results during this difficult season, if you want to begin to have the Spirit of the Lord lead you forward, you're going to have to prepare to embrace God's truth in your mind. The Bible says, stop haltering, stop dancing, stop moving between two opinions about your own mind and what God tells you to do. Stop saying, ah, uh, I think this is the best way I want to go. But you know, I come from church and Pastor Carl tell me, this is what you need to do. And then you stay there for two days and Wednesday coming, nah, I'm going to do what? Think this is what feels right to me. And I just have a feeling. And most of us treat our feeling like it's the Holy Spirit. Oh, Pastor Carl, I just have a strong feeling. Don't you know feelings lie? That's what you have to tell yourself. You lie, you lie from the pit. Go back to where you came from. Because feelings lie. And we take our feelings and make it the Holy Spirit. I just have a strong feeling, like, it's, like the Spirit speaking. No, because sometimes your feelings are way off base. Are you hearing me? And God is saying, stop haltering, stop dancing, stop moving between two opinions. If God is God, then do what? Follow Him. So I mean, follow Him. If God is who He is, then do what? Follow Him. And I've come today to encourage you to accept responsibility for where you are, but also accept responsibility for where you want to go. And if you are not where you are now, begin to purpose in your heart, raise up accountability partners, and make plans for where you want to go. Are you hearing me? Begin to say it with your spouse and to your children. This is where we are going. This is where I am going. Make yourself accountable. And begin to live out your lives to please God and not yourself. Prepare your minds for what? Action. Many of you have been sitting on the fence, even about your salvation. I am encouraging you to prepare your hearts for action. Many of you are sitting on the fence about water baptism. I'm encouraging you on the sound of my voice for action. Many of you have been making decisions, uh, uh, up or down, about many areas in your life. I'm encouraging you to do what? Prepare your mind for action. Tell your neighbor, prepare your mind for action. Prepare. And then Peter says, once you commit to action, stop slipping into your old ways. You see, last night I could have slipped. Sister Janet, it was a small piece. This is my next accountability partner. When I used to talk about the holy hog and how I like bacon, she was very loving because she's another drill sergeant when it comes to food. But I was her pastor, so when I finished preach, I think she still sends the anointing. She used to just hold my hand. She like she rubbing it, but she was hitting me. Pastor Carl. And I say, yes, Janet. I need to do better, Janet. I'm happy to report, Sister Janet, I'm doing a lot better. Amen? Get the Lord. <laughs> Lord. These are people God brought into my life. No, Pastor Carl, and you are the head. And let's go the head, go the rest of the body. If you stay up there preaching the way you're preaching, Richard, you're not leading the congregation right. You're doing, I say, yes, I took the rebuke. So now I say to you, because you're watching me, I'm leading you in a better place. I didn't tell you before, I have lost weight. And so now I can say with all faith and love, I'm encouraging you to live the same way. Give the Lord a hand. But my story can help you because I used to be fat. I used to be 299.8 pounds. And I'm going to tell you why I did that. I thought anybody was, that was over 300 pounds, I used to judge them. I used to scorn them. When people just say, oh, I'm 300, I used to scorn, oh my God, how you could get 300 pounds? And then me just keep eating, not checking my weight. One time, I went under the scale, right? And listen, 
you, many of you don't know, the scale will change the mind depending on how you speak to it. And I jumped on this scale, and when this scale was going over 300, and I started dancing like you can't make up my mind, I jumped off. I said, no way I'm going above 300 pounds. And then I got back on, and it went up to 299.8. I didn't wait for it to settle. It was more in my vicinity. I said, okay, good. I'm too. And so for the rest of my life when I preached, I was never 300 pounds. Do you hear me? I was 299.8. Don't get crazy and make it no 300. You people like to run up. Don't run up on me. But I'm telling you something. I'm doing it in love. I'm making fun of myself today. Because so many times when you're in debt, when you can't pay your bills, when there's so many things that's working against you, we created these funny services where we want to just tell you stuff, prophesy, it's going to get better. Bring in a big bottle of oil and pour it over you, and then we don't teach you. You have to change your ways. And then you go out there and you continue to be defeated, and it's sad. And Peter, teaching people in the midst of persecution, said, I'm going to teach you how to win. And the way you win is that you prepare your mind for what? Or you get it too. I got two other points, but if I can get you to embrace this, you prepare your mind for what? Action. Prepare your mind for action. Whatever area of life you're in, you can prepare your mind for action. If it's in the area of finances, you can fix it. Do you know why we don't have meetings or family meetings about finances? One, we believe that our money, my money is my money, and you're wrong. You are a steward of any resource God gives you. That's why so many of you treat the tithe like it's your money and you're giving God your money. You're wrong. You're giving God back what he's commanded you to give you from his money that he put in your hand. Can someone give a little hand? That's why we act crazy. From time money hit our hands, we get crazy. Because we don't understand that while we have possession of it, it is not ours. Can I say that again? While we may have possession of it, it is not ours. God give it to us to, to do certain things in the earth. And God empower us with money so then we as good stewards could say what? We honor God. Check after that, we do what? We make sure there's a roof over the heads of our family. Not get a new phone. We make sure that the mortgage and the rent is paid. Check. Then I got to make sure that they're in good health. I have to make sure they get decent food. So stop driving them through Wendy's and spending money because it's God's money. That's what I'm telling you. Amen. Go buy spinach. Yes. And I can tell you that because I'm talking for God's money. But when you believe it's your money, you're going to do everything with it and keep complaining how you don't have enough. Are you hearing me? Oh yeah, I just got hard. People don't like your time or money. Cause I know you can say what you want, but it's my money. But I stay stuck there because I know you're asking God for a reason. This is my prayer that God will not give you any more money till you learn to manage what you have. Amen. You could go to another church where they keep telling you lies. My prayer for you is that you learn to manage what you have. Amen. Glory to God. Woo! Yeah. Feel my, my knees buckle on that one. Yeah, bring in the music, son. I got to go home on this. Can I make another point? My prayer for you is that you get serious about what you have. That's going to get you moving to the family table. We don't like ha talking about money. Most fights, you want to start a fight in your home? You go home in there and you tell your spouse, Pastor Carl convicted me about money. Could we have a meeting tonight about money? Oh my God. It's like you tell them the devil just should. They, why we got to talk about that? I think it's working good right now how it's working. And you know what we miss? For you brought nothing into the world. Let me show you how easy it is. I don't even decide what suit I get buried in. If my wife don't like me, she could bury me naked. Tell, telling you there's a closed clo close casket so you don't see my nakedness. And everything I got, right down to my shoes, she keep it. And she could have a bonfire with it. Because Paul said you brought nothing to the world and you will take nothing out. But we behave like it's ours. In this season, we have to get serious. We live in a culture, the United States of America, and the Democrats are in again, and in order for the economy to grow, they're going to tell us about consumer confidence has gone up, and they're going to encourage you to spend. This Christmas, they need you to spend like never before because they're going to give the economy a boost in its arm. Well, can I tell you that we are going to participate, but not that way? <laughs> we are not spending like we've gone crazy. We are not the answer to America's economy. We're going to learn from today to do what God says. 
And what does God say? God says you have to budget. He says if you're a wise man in the book of Proverbs, you will account for your flocks. You will know what money you're making. You will know what is coming in. You will know where it is going. You'll be able to say to your spouse, babes, this is not a judgment, but we are spending way too much money eating out. Are you hearing me? We are spending way too much on groceries that goes in the fridge and spoils because we can't get to eat it in two weeks. And every two weeks we clean the fridge, but we are throwing away our money. We need to change, we need to change our plan. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about preparing mind for action. I'm, I'm teaching you to win in difficult times. That's how you win. I want you to begin to say, you know, I'm, I've done life my way. And look where it's gotten me. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Everything that is out of line with God's will, I'm going to fix it for 2021. Everything that is out, out of my life, I'm going to fix it. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. If I need to get married and walk in covenant and marriage, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to do it. If I need to start sitting down and talking to my spouse about how we spend our money, we're going to do it. I don't care how much time he starts staying out late. Every time I say we're going to have a budget meeting tonight, he stays out late. Just scoop him. You wait right behind the door with your pencil and your pad. And you say, I know you had to come home sometime. Now let's get to business. Are you hearing me? And what I'm telling you is painful. And you could not do it. But here's something I want to tell you. Because the preacher was wise, he taught the people what? Wisdom. And I'm asking you to trust me. And to begin to apply your mind to action. And begin to do what God is leading you to do. In every way and in every area of your life. Bring yourself to the place where you begin to meditate upon God's word and you put it into action. And I say to you, it will change your life. Seven years from now, you will not remember there was COVID-19. It will be a thing of the past. But here is a more amazing truth that the decisions you make today during these difficult times is going to put you so far out front, so far ahead, that you're going to say, wow, God bless me even in difficult times. How many of you want that to be the story of your life? That God bless me even in difficult times. Hallelujah. My emergency fund grew in difficult times. I was saving more money in difficult times. Hallelujah. My life grew and expand in difficult times. I began to, to flourish in difficult times. Yes, I be, be, began to take my health seriously. I, my weight went down, my blood pressure went down, and my health got better in difficult times. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to call you to action. Because if God is speaking to you about the areas of your life that needs to be fixed, I want us to get past the anointed prayer. And trust me, when I pray with you, I pray with all the passion in my heart. I believe what I've asked God for will come to pass. But we have to marry action with our prayers. We have to marry action with our teaching. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says that you are like a man, if you listen to to my summons and go away and don't do what I say. He said, you're like a man who looks in the mirror for a short time and then walks away and forgets who you are. I don't want you to live as, as if you have forgotten who you are because God has made you to be so much more. Made you to be so much more. Made you to be so much more. I'm asking you to break up with your little gang and your little group on your jobs. I'm asking you to break up with anybody that begins to speak things that is contrary to where you want to go. People who are anti-marriage, I'm asking you to break up with them. If you got friends who like to always got a joke about marriage, break up with them. Wave at me. All of you, I'm asking you. So nobody get, everybody just wave at me. Because some of you are entertained people, don't share your value system. But let me tell you a joke about a marriage, yeah, and it's always some negative joke. Somebody doing somebody something, somebody cheating on somebody. You get them on Facebook and you keep looking at it. Oh, it's just entertaining. It ain't entertaining. It's feeding your spirit. Are you hearing me? Everything that is contrary to where you want to go, you have to turn it off and tap into what God is teaching you. I'm telling you the truth. And I can tell you, it's like Facebook is working against me. If I preach about this today, you can believe on your way home, lying on your bed, say, well, I was here all day. I didn't really look at Facebook. As soon as you want, I'm going to be telling you everything opposite to what I was trying to teach today. It's like it hurt me in church. 
I'm going to ask you to leave your phones outside. It's like it hurt me. Facebook was going to try to undo everything I was doing in my sermon today. How do I know it? Did it to me the other day. <laughs> I was looking for, for something the next time. Facebook is telling me everything opposite to what I look. I say, the devil is a liar. You're not going to change my mind. Are you hearing me? It's marketing. It's marketing. Say, I must accept responsibility for where I am and for where I want to go. Amen. And that's what God is saying to you. The word is going to help you. Prayer is going to help you. But you got to begin to prepare your mind for action. For what? Yeah, yeah. You can't talk yourself into good health. You have to prepare yourself for action. You can't talk yourself into financial stability. You have to prepare yourself for... Is it making sense? You can't talk yourself into spiritual maturity. You got to prepare yourself for action. You'll be surprised for seven years, people think, oh, Pastor, I want to be more spiritual. But they don't have no prayer life. They don't want to read the Bible. They don't want to come to prayer meeting. But yet they want to be more spiritual. And then, and then after being saved for seven years, the devil gets next day and make you crazy. And just because you're saved for seven years, they tell you you could go speak into people's lives. You're not ready. You know, this ain't no social promotion. You grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's how you get strong on your faith. Not just by being saved. Well, let me see. I get saved back, yeah, and Pastor Carl baptized me. Yeah, I should be good. It's 11 years now. That's not how it works. You have to grow. You have to grow, you have to grow, you have to grow, you have to grow. Amen. I'm more preaching to the house than who's hearing me on Facebook, but if you're getting on Facebook, good, because there's an anointing where God is calling you to prepare yourself for action. I want you to zero in on an area of your life right now. It's not the first one because I'm going to ask you about three. I want you to zero in on the area of the life that if that was to change tomorrow, it will bring about the greatest joy in your life. If this area of my life is to change tomorrow, bring about the greatest joy, it could be relationship, it could be your money, it could be your health. God, if I can get this fixed, if I can be where I envision myself being, I'll be a happy person. I'll be living a wonderful life. My dreams will be coming true. Do you have that in your mind? Yes. That's the one I want you to work on first. Then after that one, because I'm doing extraction, I want you to write two more areas of your lives that are just as important to you. Okay? Three areas. Then if you have a spouse, or if you have someone you're close to, I want you to exchange those three areas so that you have an accountability partner. And then once you do the exchange, I want you to pray for one another. That's my assignment to you. In Jesus' mighty name. You say, wow, that's a strange sermon. That's my assignment to you. And I want you to begin from that extraction to begin to prepare your mind for action. To prepare your mind for what? Action. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give you praise. Glory to God. I think this is the greatest point that I can drive home from my sermon today. How you want us to begin to prepare ourselves, that we have to follow your commands, we have to take responsibility, that you are calling us, you, you are saying to us, not that you will make us holy, but that we must choose, we must be intentional about being different as you are different. I pray that that will really sink into us, that awesome responsibility that you have given us to live out our faith in this present world, and that it is our responsibility to live lives that please you, that you have given us the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we may not stumble or fall or fail, but we have to rise up and take action based on what we have heard. I thank you for the people of God who have heard your word and heard your message. I see the areas of their lives that need fixing, but nobody can fix it for them. Not even with a 30 minute sermon. As much as I desire to see them in health and prosper as your souls prosper, they have to decide. They have to commit. They have to be diligent, hallelujah. They have to persevere and pursue the promises and the plans of God for their lives. And I pray that faith will be stirred up and those commitments will be made to do things differently than a watching world. And I pray, oh God, that you will honor the instructions of your servant, that as they commit their ways unto you, you can write this down, Psalms 37.5, as they commit their ways unto you, as they make plans and commit their ways unto you, Father God, ways that pleases your heart, ways that is in alignment to your word. May you bring their ways, your perfect plans to pass in their lives. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. If you're under the sound of my voice, even if you're at home and God has spoken to your heart about areas of your life, this is where you're joining me in faith. 
I'm calling you to action. You're saying, Pastor Carl, I rededicate myself. Even to areas of my life, I've walked away. I've given over. I'm just coexisting with the status quo. But you have stirred up my faith to believe again, to begin to take action, to bring about a revolutionary change like never before. If that's you, wherever you are, and you're expecting God to show up this time and to honor your actions with his holy anointing and to help you persevere and bring it to pass. If that's your action, you just stand to your feet. I just want to salute you and celebrate you as you stand. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we bless your name. Help me. Lift up the music higher. Glory to God. Glory to God. We give you praise and glory. We give you praise and glory. I'm celebrating you in the heavens. Hallelujah. Help me celebrate each other. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. Yes, we give you praise. We celebrate you in your home. Yes, for newfound faith, for rededication, for commitment to the Lord's ways and plans over your life. Yes, we bless your name, Father. We thank you for your holy anointing. We thank you that you speak forth your word in the lives of your people. We thank you that the commitments will stand firm. Hallelujah. That your ways will be prospered. Hallelujah. Psalm 37, 5. Yes, and 32, 23. We pray over their lives in Jesus' mighty name. We give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. Help me celebrate yourself out. Give the Lord a hand. Yes, I feel it anointed. Let's celebrate and give the Lord a hand. Yes, lift up the music. Give the Lord a hand. Yes, share the person in. Share that person in. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise and glory. We thank you for what you're doing in the lives of your people. Yes. Romans 8, 23, and we close with these words. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. May God bless you. Glory to God. I have to stop and give God thanks for miracles. Wow, obedience brings miracles. God, you humble me every time. Because when I think I've done my worst, you're about to do your best. You're about to show out and show up in amazing ways. And I want to pause as I release your people to give you thanks for the miracles that you are giving birth to. I sense by the Spirit of God miracles breaking forth over the lives of God's people. I thank you for miracles, for miracles, for miracles, for miracles, for miracles, for miracles, for miracles. Hey, yes, belong what we can conceive or imagine in our hearts. For miracles, for miracles, for miracles. I see amazing transformation for miracles, for miracles, for miracles. I stand ready to hear, yes, the mighty miracle work and power of God in the lives of your people. Hey, I give you praise, I give you praise, I give you praise. Yes, Father God, I want to say it again. I bless your name for miracles, for miracles. 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 I bless your name for miracles and for miracles. Hey, 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 hey. I bless your name for miracles. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise and glory. 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 Hey, like a mighty river, like a mighty river, like a mighty river. Hallelujah. Like the tsunami of grace. Hallelujah. Hey, you're causing suddenly to happen in our lives what is beyond our imagination as we give you praise and glory. And now may the grace of our Lord, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with you now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Give the Lord a hand. You are dismissed. May the God of heaven bless you and may he preserve your life. Miracles! Hey! We give you thanks for miracles. Yes, I see them happening in the lives of your people. Hey, abundance of miracles, manifestation of grace. Hallelujah. The power and the presence of God in their lives. Hey, we say flow, mighty river. Hey, yes, we beside every impossible thing that stands in their way. We give you praise and glory. Yes, and we honor your great name for miracles upon miracles. Hey, the mighty working of God towers his people, perfecting his plan in their lives. Hey, we bless your name. You are the miracle working God who establishes your covenant for a thousand generations. 
be honored and blessed with him forever.